Cycling 4,700 miles across America, that's the easy part. Try doing it with almost no negative impact and while paying attention to how every single one of your little daily actions affects the world around you both near and far. That's what I did two summers ago and I learned all about the pressing environmental issues of our time and how I can be a part of the solution. Now I'm sharing with you what I learned in a series of five videos. This video is about waste. The average American creates four and a half pounds of trash per day. With a population of 318 million Americans, that's over 500 billion pounds of trash every year. It's easy to just throw our garbage in the trash can and never think twice about it. It's out of sight, out of mind. So on my journey across America, I decided that I would hold on to every single piece of trash I created. If I lived like the average American, I'd be carrying over 400 pounds of trash on my bike trailer when I reached Vermont. That would be physically impossible. To ensure that I'd be able to make it across America, I set some guidelines before the trip. Here's a few of the things that I committed to doing. Compost all of my food scraps, buy unpackaged food and bring my own reusable bags and dishes to eat, buy used stuff when I needed something or purchase new items with the least packaging, carry a reusable water bottle, recycle everything I could, and patch my bike tires or give the spent tubes to a bike shop that could upcycle them. But what I learned is that the trash I saw myself on this trip was nothing compared to what goes on behind the scenes. First, the raw materials have to be extracted from the earth. Forests were likely chopped down or mountaintops removed in the mining. There's a ton of electricity and fossil fuels used to produce the trash and toxic waste made in the production. Next, the products are shipped all around the world to end up at the store, all of which takes a ton more electricity and fossil fuels. And of course, more fossil fuels are used to go to the store and go shopping. Throughout this entire process, destruction is happening both blatantly and in secret. Air, oceans, lakes, and rivers are polluted. Animals are displaced and killed, and a lot of people get really sick from the pollution and the crappy work conditions. And I learned that's what it took just to put this bag into my hands. And for every garbage can of waste that we put on the curb, 70 garbage cans of waste are made up the production line. And now, this bag is trash. So what happens from here? Well, the garbage truck comes and picks it up. Most of our trash is taken to landfills, but landfills have hugely negative environmental consequences. They're designed to keep the stuff in them, not break it down. Even organic material doesn't biodegrade properly, and some excavations have found 25-year-old carrots in 40-year-old still legible newspapers. The stuff that actually does break down releases methane, a potent greenhouse gas contributing to climate change. Other trash is incinerated and some of the most toxic man-made substances known to science are released into the air in huge volumes. But much of it doesn't make it to the landfill. Our oceans, forests, and streets are littered with trash. It may be easy to overlook a few pieces of trash on the ground, but it's way more prevalent when we look at the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, a garbage island the size of Texas that floats in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. This trash is detrimental to animals and wildlife. So is recycling the answer? We absolutely should recycle. It reduces the need to harvest virgin resources and mine, but it is not the answer. It's a highly resource and energy intensive process. From the trucks driving around to pick it up, to the huge plants taking up land, to the electricity and water used in recycling the materials. Not to mention a lot of recycling is sent on barges to the other side of the world, and much of it is incorrectly disposed of anyway. After 104 days of cycling, I made it across the country, creating only two pounds of trash and nine pounds of recycling. Just very, very rigorously, I followed reduce, reuse, recycle, 
two pounds of trash, about eight or nine pounds of recycling, and all of my food waste uh, was buried in the woods and composted. So I don't expect anybody at home to do just this, but there's definitely goes to show how much, uh, how much reduction can be had. I created over 200 times less trash than the average person in America. And it's actually pretty easy if you stick to the three R's. First, reduce. Ask yourself, do I really need this or do I just want this? Then, reuse everything you can as long as you can. And if reduce and reuse won't work, then make recycling your last resort. There are so many ways to apply the three R's into your life. Here's some of my favorite recommendations for you. Composting. Compost your food scraps and your yard waste. Ditching bottled water and carrying your own water bottle. Saying no to one-time use disposable items and taking reusable alternatives instead, such as a hand towel rather than napkins. Buying unpackaged food like fruits and veggies and everything in the bulk section of the grocery store. Perching used stuff rather than new stuff in packages. Repairing stuff rather than throwing it away and getting a new one. Donating stuff to a thrift store or a friend instead of throwing it away. Buying quality stuff that won't turn into trash. And being grateful for what you have instead of trying to keep up with the Joneses.